What's up guys, welcome back to Calgary Barbell to Form Check Friday. Now this is the series where we take your lifts that you submit and we use a random number generator, select from a large pool that we've sort of accumulated over the last little while and we put them up on this green screen over here and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw on them a little bit, I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the mistakes that these lifters are making and how you can fix them. So even if you don't get selected, I think there's still a lot of value. A lot of these mistakes are mistakes that I see time and time again. Um, so in most cases, uh, a lot of these mistakes are things that uh, a lot of lifters are doing. So you can go ahead and apply some of this stuff to your own lifting. Now, just a quick announcement before we get into today's episode. We're doing some seminars in the UK in a place called Basingstoke, not Basingstoke, but Basingstoke, uh, just outside of London in the UK. And we're also doing a seminar in Villeneuve, just outside of Paris in France. So if you guys are interested in either of those, head over to calvarybarbell.com, click on the seminars link, and uh, you can go ahead and purchase tickets there if you wanna come hang out and learn a whole lot about all the different aspects of powerlifting. I'm really excited about these. Without any further ado, we're gonna get down to it here. And Kevin Thomas is our first submission. Um, sorry, I just need to open it in the right program here. All right, cool. So, now the biggest thing that I think Kevin needs to work on is his starting position. So if you guys notice, right as he pulls in here, this is the start position. Um, now, generally speaking, we wanna try to get these shoulders down a little bit. You can see they're out in front of the bar a little bit. We got the bar here. So the shoulders are a little bit too far in front of the bar for what I would usually recommend. As well as we got a fair bit of flexion in the back which isn't necessarily a big issue, but in some cases is something that we can improve to improve our leverage and positioning on the bar. Now let's watch what happens as he continues to go through the rest of this pull. So the shoulders cause the hips, the shoulders being out front cause the hips to rise when that knee extension happens like it should off the floor, instead of being nice and tight and braced in this torso angle being unchanging, you can see that we actually lose more positioning as we initiate the lift there. And that causes him to really struggle here because as you can see, his hips are pretty much locked. All that's missing is, uh, there we go, is this back extension here. So as he finishes the lift, he just has to pull through with his back to finish, see that? So, the big thing that I would do here is, with your setup, I would pull into more tension. It looks like you're, you're pulling into position, but you're not creating tension against the bar. So I want you to work on really trying to drive those shoulder blades down uh, as kind of a number one priority. Getting the back extended, it might be a good thing for you. It might not even be what you need, but the shoulders pulled down, the lats a little more active and involved. Um, and that shoulder positioning, like I said, is the big, big thing. So that when you start pushing, oh, space bars, no, there we go. So when you start pushing, these hips don't rise up behind you. What we wanna see is we wanna see this back angle, even if it's a rounded back, we wanna see that remaining relatively static as we initiate the lift. So that when we get to the top, we don't have all this extra back extension to go through because we haven't lost position off the floor. So that's the biggest thing there. Kevin, uh, is gonna be to work on your shoulder positioning, making sure you're pulling those shoulder blades down into your lats, and making sure that before you start the lift, you wanna lever yourself against the bar and not just sit down into, a, into the position, but to pull yourself in and really try to drive yourself into a position where before the lift even starts, you're feeling tension through the quads, glutes, hamstrings, low back, upper back, lats, everything. Everything should be tight, engaged, and uncomfortable. And honestly, with lighter weights, it should even float a little bit off the floor. That's a good indication, a good cue that you're doing it right if we're getting that floating off the floor. So those are the big takeaways there. And we're gonna get on to our next lifter here. And this is Marco. Now, Marco said he's relatively new to sumo deadlifting. He said he's been a conventional puller forever. Welcome to the dark side, my friend. And uh, let's take a look at what's going on with your sumo deadlift here, man. So really good start position. Looks like again, we could probably get into a little bit more tension before we start the lift. Um, but positioning's fantastic. The initiation of the lift is pretty good, but just a little bit loose. So same kind of thing. You're doing a really good job of sitting yourself down into position. Now watch just as we start, 
See that very slight movement between the brace position? So, oh, I was looking for a slow motion there, but I don't know if we have one. So here is the start position, and you can see as we start, there's that little bit of jerking kind of jolting motion. Now, if we're pulled into adequate tension, just like I was talking about with Kevin, if we're pulled into really good tension, we don't see that sort of shift off the floor. It's like the, the weight's kind of taking the body by surprise because we're not braced hard enough into it. We're not creating tension before the bar leaves the floor. That was a good rep. Let's watch this one back again. So a little less of that sort of initial jolt off the floor. Uh, and this was again a good rep. So as the set wore on, you got better. And I think you're, you're kind of using that eccentric and that lowering phase to sort of ready yourself or to create more tension because in this initial rep here, we're really not seeing as much tension as I would like. So I want you to again, work yourself into being tighter against the bar before you start, but positioning and the movement of it, like uh, initiating with the knee extension, maintaining a good solid back angle. You're doing a lot of things really, really well, Marco. So I think if you can create a little more tension off the floor and before you initiate the lift, that's gonna be a big thing. But overall, you're making a lot of progress and things look really good. So let's uh, take a look at Maximilian from Poland. Uh, he says he's doing some bench press here. It doesn't say it, but uh, he is. BLC, there we go. All right, so let's take a look at Maximilian's bench here. Looks pretty damn good, man. So we've got pretty good positioning here. We're not seeing too, too much movement in the shoulders. That last rep, we kind of didn't groove perfectly. We didn't have the greatest bar path on that last rep, but it's the last rep of what looks like a relatively heavy set. So I wouldn't be too, too concerned about that. Uh, I mean, that's one thing that I would probably try to reinforce is that as you go through the set, make sure you're getting that nice consistent bar path. The other thing I would do is, uh, I'm not sure if this is specifically touch and go, but I would always pause reps, uh, unless obviously you're doing uh, an accessory movement with specifically touch and go. But we can see touch point there, bar back and up, good rep. Touch point there, bar back and up, good rep. Touch point there, bar up and back a little bit. Touch point there and watch this rep. Now watch, uh, let's see this, we'll make this our reference point here. So um, when we go through, it doesn't come back quite as far as the other reps. Now it's a little more straight up than some of those other reps right here. So it still comes back and then it comes back more at the top. We see that big shift from here to here. So we're getting more of an up and back on this last one, as opposed to, uh, let's say this rep, which I think was a little bit better. So it's coming back and then up. See the difference in bar path there? So we're back, oops, back and then up. And then on this one, we're going a lot more straight up and then back, that big shift happens right there. So long story short, I just kind of wanted to illustrate to you guys uh, some of the sort of nuance of bar path and the difference between back and up and up and back. Now there's a really, really good article uh, by Greg Knuckles. If you just Google Greg Knuckles bench press bar path, uh, which dives into some studies that were done on the bar path of advanced and elite level bench pressers versus novice bench pressers. Uh, and I think that there's a, a very strong sort of reasoning and, and evidence base for the leverage advantage of pressing back off the chest as opposed to pressing up and then back. Um, just being that you create a little bit of a, a more sort of straight up and down, you're, you're pushing the bar back over the joint that's producing the force instead of remaining out here where we have this kind of lever arm working against us. So. Um, yeah, biggest thing there is just try to be nice and consistent with your bar path. I know I went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I think it's important. I think that's a good thing for people to be conscious of is that uh, advantage that you can create using a good solid bar path. Our next video here comes from Conan, I believe. Uh, that was his email. He didn't put his name in his email, so I'm going to call you Conan. Now, he's doing some squats here. Uh, he said this was uh, one of his rep out sets from doing 531, which uh, if you're uh, novice 
is a program created by Jim Wendler where you do a lot of AMRAPs. So, right there we can already see we need to work on our depth, buddy. So, uh, let me illustrate this for you. So we got the crease of the hot thigh, crease of the hip, and we've got the top of the knee. Now you can see the crease of the thigh is above the top of the knee joint. We need the crease of the thigh below the top of the knee joint. So if you're looking to be a competitive power lifter, one thing you're gonna need to do is work on that depth. Let's see what else is going on here. It's tough with the camera moving a little bit. All right, so we're seeing a little bit of uh, what we call uh, a sort of squat morning pattern here. So we see this, uh, there we go. We see this torso angle here and I don't have a tool to draw straight lines because that's in the paid version. Um, but let's see how this changes as we initiate the lift. So we're getting a little bit more, hold on. Uh, there we go. So it's probably more like that. So you can see the difference in the angle here where we're a little more, uh, getting a little bit more tip forward. The bar's kind of rolling on you, or not necessarily rolling, but causing your, your body to shift forward. Now, generally speaking, uh, that's one of two things. It's either a weakness in the quads uh, and kind of losing positioning. Um, as a result of the, of the quads not contributing or uh, of you not cueing yourself to use your quads properly or enough, uh, and it could be a weakness of the posterior chain as well. But it also is one of those things that will start to set on as the RPE increases. Um, so I would probably do a couple of things here. Number one is I would work on making sure that you're achieving competition depth every single rep. The other thing I would do is probably try to find some uh, quad focused accessory work or supplemental work to assist you in using your quads a little bit better to developing more quad strength and more quad um, musculature. So I would do some things like front squats, high bar squats. Um, specifically for this squat morning pattern, one of the things that I often prescribe for athletes is gonna be a pin squat or a pause squat. And we actually did a really cool video on that uh, just recently, if you look up on our channel, just look for it. It's probably five or six videos ago, um, the pause squat versus pin squat video, but that's gonna give you some insight into how to use those variations, uh, and what they should look like. But yeah, pretty standard sort of squat morning pattern uh, and cutting depth a little bit. So the two biggest things I would work on there, like I said, are depth and trying to fix that squat morning, trying not to let those hips shoot up behind you. One thing that you can do in terms of cueing is just cue yourself to keep your knees forward as you drive out of the hole. We can see that, and I talked about this in the last form check Friday, definitely. We can see that, I'll show you guys here. So here we have the knee joint, we'll mark it right there. When we pop up out of the hole, we can see that knee joint comes back quite a bit. So we see all this distance here and that sort of uh, frontal plane translation. So that shift is gonna cause the hips to come back and translate a lot of the load onto the posterior chain because the quads are, uh, are not doing what they should be doing. So that's probably the biggest thing or the biggest two things that I would work on there. Conan. Our last video today is gonna come from Wesley. Now Wesley's doing some wrong media player. Wesley's doing some sumo deadlifts as well. And uh, I kind of previewed these a little bit before uh, this episode. And honestly, it looks really good. I don't really see many issues at all. Um, I think that you could maybe get your shoulders down a little bit more. It looks like you're kind of pulling them back a little bit instead of down. Right there. And I would work on that lockout. Looks like you might be stopping a little bit shy of lockout there. Um, and kind of a common thing that I see is lifters when they lock out their deadlifts going forward to the bar, instead of staying back a little bit, weight rooted on the heels a little more, and pulling the bar into you. Now, the latter of those is gonna help keep you a little bit better balanced, keeping that weight a little bit better distributed through the whole foot, which means your center of gravity is gonna be a little bit more in line with where the bar is, as opposed to coming forward onto the toes, um, shifting that center of balance forward, and that's gonna increase the likelihood of you uh, ending up missing a rep forward. Um, I should know I missed a rep forward and backwards last nationals, two nationals ago. Um, but this, the start position looks great. 
Uh, you're maintaining really good position off the floor. He's not the, he's not the most upright deadlifter, but this just goes to show that you don't have to be to have good, efficient sumo technique. You don't need to be Yuri Belkin and, and, and straight up and down. Um, you can be a little bit more of a, of a torso forward, a uh, little forward lean kind of uh, sumo deadlifter and still pull really well, which, uh, which Wesley's doing here. He's doing a great job of deadlifting. Um, but just this lockout looks like it stopped a little bit short and it looks like you're going forward to the bar instead of pulling the bar back into you. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Form Check Friday. Like I said, if you want to get your video up here, go ahead and email it in to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. If you guys have any questions about the lifts, um, any questions about anything in general, go ahead and ask them in the comments below. Leave a like if you liked it, share it with your friends if you got featured, and we'll see you guys in the next one.